For all the millions, if not billions, of pounds sunk into car development each year, every Formula One racer's fortunes ultimately come down to a single specification component common on each car. After all, the tyres are the only thing that separates the car from the ground, except in cases when the undertray lashes against the kerbs. Early in the British Grand Prix weekend, when temperatures were abnormally high, the soft tyres took the brunt of the punishment. Good for about half a lap amid the 35 degree C heatwave on Friday, the red wall Pirellis began to melt like a soft camembert, and led Lewis Hamilton to remark mid-practice that the softest compound was rubbish. But even that couldn't have prepared the six-time champion for the final lap of the race at Silverstone. Hamilton called it a heart-in-mouth moment as the left front tyre began to wrinkle like Gordon Ramsay's forehead and tore itself asunder rolling around on the rim as he attempted to wrestle his suddenly enfeebled W11 to a clutch victory. Mere laps before, teammate Valtteri Bottas had endured the same problem, as McLaren's Carlos Sainz Jr. faced a similarly chastening experience as his own left front began to shred itself to pieces and robbed him of a nailed-on fourth-place finish. Silverstone is notoriously tough on tyres. The plethora of high-speed right-hand corners at Silverstone loads the two tyres on the left-hand side heavily, and in today's cars, both Cops and Abby are taken flat. As the car rolls outwards in response to the steering motion, the strain that those tyres take is particularly huge to keep the car on the island. Stowe and Beckett's are also rather quick right-handers, adding to that load. When you consider the extreme modern-day suspension solutions that teams run to draw as much grip from the tyres as possible, the Pirelli rubber takes an immense amount of punishment on a lap. Given that the bulk of the field switched to the hardest compound available, it's a bit of a worry that they didn't seem to stand up, especially when you consider that the 70th anniversary Grand Prix next week, also due to take place at Silverstone, has softer compounds planned for use. As Lando Norris explained post-race, the field quickly switched to tyre management mode in order to keep their Pirellis in the game for as long as possible. As Norris told Sky after the race, even on lap 1 you can't push as much as you want. You can't just push into an understeer as soon as you feel an understeer, you just back out of it. If you use that understeer on lap 1, you grain the front tyre and by lap 4 or lap 5, it's game over. Silverstone and the front left tyres are not friends, never have been, but nowadays in Formula 1 with the loads that we put into that front left, it just makes for tough races. Although the profusion of tyre wear was at least a contributing factor to the trio of delaminations that Hamilton, Bottas and Sainz faced, debris was also touted as a possibility. Earlier on in the race, Kimi Raikkonen's Alfa Romeo began to shed parts of its front wing, and Hamilton suspected that the debris and detritus on track was the reason why he was suddenly granted with an extra challenge halfway through the final lap. Pirelli has launched a 360 degree investigation into the events that descended on the British Grand Prix's final laps, in a bid to determine once and for all whether the tyres were simply overextending their capabilities, or if the unclear debris truly put the spanner in the last lap works. There's also the possibility that frequent liberties that the drivers take on the inside of the chapel curve may have weakened the tyre's constitution, and it may also be wise for Silverstone to safeguard against any further issues next weekend by beefing up the kerbs on that corner, lest the top layer of rubber receive any more cuts or lacerations to the surface. Pirelli has under a week to investigate, and for their sake let's hope they find the issue, but perversely, the exploding front left tyres added a last minute injection of excitement which is probably something they shouldn't be doing. Wind the clock back as far as 2013, and you may recall a series of high-profile tyre failures that ended the hopes of a handful of drivers, Hamilton included, having been leading the race. Pirelli was forced to rethink its range of 2013 tyres and replace the steel belts within with a Kevlar fibre design to minimise the risk of punctures. There had been a collection of tyre failures before in that season, as Pirelli had pushed the limits of its high-degradation tyre construction but Silverstone's punishing nature on the left-hand tyres rather exacerbated the situation. Moving away from tyres to developments then, and a number of teams brought a selection of new rear wing packages to the table in order to draw more performance at the rather rapid Silverstone circuit. Red Bull brought a design where the rear wing main plane sweeps upwards at the outboard sections to minimise the drag penalty, sacrificing a little bit of downforce in the process. This is quite a common approach, and uses the central section to produce the majority of downforce, while removing a little bit of downforce from the less efficient parts of the wing to boost the straight line speed. The team also ditched the louvered end plates it used in the last two races, presumably finding that arrangement a little more draggy than the standard design it uses. 
Max Verstappen qualified third, but it was still a way off of the Mercedes as Red Bull has something of a gaping chasm to the Brackley squad in the performance department. Ferrari went even skinnier with its wing, bringing something you'd be more likely to see at somewhere like Spa. There are two key flaws with Ferrari's 2020 package. Firstly, the power unit is too down on power after EFIA's technical directives at the tail end of last year stripped it of performance, and secondly, the SF1000 has a surplus of drag, which hinders its straight line speed even further. It seems to have a solid level of downforce however, which helped its drivers, in particular Charles Leclerc, to perform admirably in the first sector at Silverstone before losing time on the faster parts. To reduce the disadvantage on both the Wellington and Hangar Straits, Ferrari's shallow rear wing was a bid to grasp an extra couple of clicks on the speedometer. For the most part it worked, Leclerc qualified fourth and held his own in the race, having enough legs in the car to stay ahead of the chasing McLarens and Renaults. Thanks to Bottas's left front tyre giving up spectacularly in the dying stages of the race, Leclerc was in a position to scoop a surprise podium. Vettel also had the lower drag wing but was mired in the midfield, to compound a miserable weekend for the four-time champion. McLaren did likewise with its rear wing, bringing a range of new parts to Silverstone in practice and deciding to stick with them throughout the weekend. Drivers Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris were on for a big haul of points before Sainz was dumped out of contention with his own tyre dramas. With a weekend's worth of data on the Silverstone circuit, it will be interesting to see how the teams turn that into something useful for the second race, F1's 70th Anniversary Grand Prix. Oh yeah, and as the tyres are expected to be a grade softer, there should be plenty of two or three stop strategies to stop the end of race tyre works.